Hey guys, this is a complex video. In this video, we're basically going to be talking about how to use Alpine's scroll.window method to actually animate the circle past a particular point. So we, the animation that we basically want to make is that when we actually reach this circle, the circle should remain at, fixed at the top. And when we actually go to a particular point, for example, these red boxes, the circle should remain fixed at that point. And let's say when, and then obviously I can pay a scroll down, but when I basically go up, the circle should start scrolling upwards and then retain its particular position or its original position. So let's just go ahead and actually start doing that. So I'm going to save the page and I'm going to, let's say, start from scratch. So let's just move the circle a bit above so we can see it. So here's our circle. And obviously I want the circle to be um, uh, living absolutely. And we can do that a bit later as well. Uh, but let's just go ahead and actually add some conditions. So I'm going to say X minus data. Obviously, I have to define some data properties to even get started. So I'm going to say that by default, this circle uh, is obviously going to be position absolute, but uh, we also want it to be fixed. So this is the tag that I'm going to, or this is the flag that I'm going to use, circle, uh, scroll fixed circle, or maybe fixed circle just to simplify it a bit more. So the fixed circle is going to be false by default because it's going to be absolute. And when we actually reach a certain point, then it's going to be position fixed. Now we're going to add just for our, uh, just for looking at it, we're going to say the scroll number is going to be zero. The stop point, uh, and actually let me just define the stop points. So the starting point of the circle is basically when it reaches this, uh, the container of the circle. So I'm going to say, I'm going to give a reference to access it. I'm going to say this is going to be the start point. And similarly, I'm going to give a, let me just see where we have. So here we have the red boxes and we're going to say the stopping point is just going to be this. So in order to access, let's say DOM elements, we can use the X minus reference property and we can easily access them by saying the stop point is going to be, let's say, sorry, this also needs to be an S2 and this needs to be an, a colon and similarly here as well. So the stop point is going to be our reference and the reference I have defined our stop. So the stop point is going to be stop and it's going to be its offset top. So now we have the offset top of the stop point and we're going to do the same for the start point. I'm actually just going to go ahead and change that to start. So we have the stop point and we have the start point defined. We don't need a comma in the end. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. In the circle, I'm just going to go ahead and actually add two divs and I'm going to, for our, just, just to look at it, I'm going to say the X minus text is going to be the scroll number for first and uh, then it's going to be, let's say, <clears throat> the stop point or when it's actually going to stop. So stop point or point. So let's just see. So here we have our scroll number and here we have our stop point. So obviously there, these are not changing right now because we haven't updated them on scroll. So let's just go ahead and actually do that. So I'm going to say now aft on a scroll, when a user scrolls the window, you want to do something, right? So go ahead and actually do the things that I'm actually telling you here. So what we basically want to do here is we want to say that the scroll number obviously will update uh, based on the window dot page y offset. So we're going to detect the offset of from the top and we're going to say it's going to basically be something like this. And there seems to be an error. So let's just verify what the error is. Okay, so the error is like, if I actually want to update the value uh, afterwards, I have to put an is equals to instead of a colon. So now as you can see, the scroll number that we have added here is actually changing. So that's all fine and good. Okay, so now as you can see, the scroll number should be updating and it is updating. So now we want to update some of the other properties as well. So I'm going to update the stop number as well. And I'm, I can just go ahead and actually copy this whole thing. And I can say this is going to be is equals to this. So we don't necessarily have to do this, but I'm just doing this in case there are some other extra elements that actually appear on the screen, which would actually change the scroll point as well, uh, especially in responsive layouts when you have things stacking like this point can actually change. So I just want to fetch that point and we can do the same thing with the stop number as well, but I'm not going to do that with the, sorry, with the start point as well, but I'm not going to do that with the start point. So now here we have our stop point. And that should also be updating when we scroll. So obviously currently the stop point remains consistent, which is why it's not changing, but let's just go ahead and add that in. So now that I have my uh, <coughs> scroll number, I have my stop point. Let's just go ahead and actually define when the circle is gonna be fixed. So by default, it's gonna be absolute. And we're basically gonna say is when we actually go to the page Y offset or 
basically now that is the scroll number when the scroll number exceeds the start point i want to go ahead and i want to change that change this particular value to true otherwise it should be false and that's basically all we need so now i'm going to go to my circle and i can also go ahead and just showcase it to you so this fixed number fixed circle i'm going to have it here so it's false by default but once we actually reach the circle as you can see it's true now uh, and when we actually go up it's false when we go down it's true so all of that works okay so let's just go ahead and actually add some classes to this particular thing so i'm going to say there's going to be a class and the class is going to say that if the scroll sorry the fixed circle is true i want to go ahead and i want to add a fixed property to it and i want to add a top minus zero to it and if it is false I want to add a absolute property to it. So now let's just see how it works. So if I scroll down, as you can see, the circle remains fixed at the top. And when we reach this end circle, nothing happens because we haven't added that condition. But when we actually go top, go on top, it actually remains in its uh, previous position. So we want to add one more condition here. We want to say the when, this should be true when the start when the scroll number actually exceeds the start point, and it should also be true when the scroll number is less than the stop point or the ending point obviously you can name the variables however you want so now if you actually go down it stays at the top and when actually when it actually reaches this point it it makes itself absolute and which is why obviously it disappears so what we want to basically do here now is we want to say that when uh, so most of it is actually working right so most of it is actually working what we basically want is we want it to actually remain fixed here so let's just go ahead and actually do that and I'll, i'm going to do that with let's say translate you can do it with the top property as well you can do it with basically whatever it is that you want so i'm going to say on the circle in itself and you can define that above as well it doesn't matter uh, if you want like i can actually go ahead and define it above just so every all of the scroll window stuff is actually placed above so i want to say that when the page y so for example when the uh, sorry not the page y when the scroll number uh, is greater than the stop point when it actually becomes greater than the stop point i want you to do something and what is it that what is it that i actually want you to do i want you to grab the circle and you can grab the circle by this reference and then the circle uh, and i want to change its style and what do i actually want to change the style to i can say i want you to change it to a transform and i want to I want to have that transform to be, let's say, change the value of the translate y. And the translate y is going to have a value of stop, uh, sorry, the stop point. So here we have our stop point that I've defined here. So it's going to be the stop point. Obviously, it's going to be this particular point. I want this, uh, this circle to actually have the same value as this particular thing. And it should also be so let's just say if i actually just do that let's just explore what happens here and i obviously want to add another condition as well i want to say if obviously that case does not match i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to copy this whole thing then the transform by default is actually just going to be uh, the translate y sorry is just going to be zero pixels right so it's going to be zero pixels here and it's going to be this amount of pixels here so let's just go ahead and see what happens so I'm going to go ahead and refresh it, just see if I have some errors. So it looks like I have some minor errors. So let's just see where exactly those errors are. So I think one of the error obviously is that I haven't closed the bracket here. And similarly, I haven't closed one bracket here. Or maybe I have. So let's just go ahead and actually refresh uh, and see. Okay, so I, I have closed the error there. It says cannot read properties of undefined reading style. So it's saying that it cannot read the property of the circle. So obviously it cannot read it because we haven't defined the reference for the circle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and define that. So now here we have our circle. I'm just gonna go ahead and clear this thing. And I'm gonna say, obviously it's gonna start from the top. And we act, when we actually go and reach this point, it's basically gonna be here. And when we actually start scrolling to the top, obviously it disappears. Something really funky is going on. So basically there's an issue here. When we actually scroll to the top, it doesn't uh, actually come here, which it should. And the issue here is that we basically have this wrong bracket here. And I'm just going to remove it and let's see how it looks. So basically when it reaches this particular point, it moves here and, it, and then it stays fixed. 
and then we, when we actually go to the top, it's working as behaved, as expected. So what we basically want to do is, obviously, since this circle doesn't start from the top, it already has some offset from the top. We just want to minus that from this particular value that we're actually giving it. So we're going to say that well, we're going to have our starting point, and we're just going to minus the starting point from this stop point. So let's just go ahead and actually do that. So the stop point is going to minus the start point, and let's see how that looks. So basically now, as you can see, it remains fixed here. And if I go to the top, it's working as well. And if I come to the bottom, it remains fixed in this position. And that's basically how you go ahead and animate something like that. So this was a complex video, I understand, but I've done that just to help someone uh, understand how this animation can actually function because they needed it. So that's going to be it for this video. Do subscribe to hit the bell icon and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.